Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the chart, 30-minute uh, chart of Bitcoin, uh, the Huobi price from Bitcoin Wisdom. And you can see here I've drawn in a couple of trend lines. Let's go out to the hourly. And you can see we just have a touchdown here with a breakdown of this first trend line, this short-term trend line, a touch of this long-term trend line that goes back to, it's not that long, back to November 21st. So we may be looking at a breakdown in Bitcoin temporarily, especially when you look at this red volume spikes here, which exceed anything we've seen recently. So it may be a breakdown. It may not be a breakdown. It may actually continue this rally. But I just wanted to show you in case you are playing cryptocurrencies, especially if you have a Poloniex account, I wanted to show you on Poloniex, uh, this is a method that I use to hedge my Bitcoin, um, my Bitcoins that I have on the exchange if I think that there's going to be a downdraft. And so the way that this works is that there is actually a US dollar cash exchange here where you can convert your cryptos into cash. Now it's actually not US dollars, but it is a dollar equivalent um, US dollar, USDT. And there is a, a decent spread, but not that bad. You can see the spread here. You've got uh, about $1,200 worth of Bitcoin's bid at 762.7 and uh, then the sell is 762.4. That looks like that's a, a mismatch here. So 764 looks like the real price here. And so you're talking about maybe a $2 spread. Uh, that That is it if you take the sell order or the buy order. You could try to you know put your bid up above these or put your cell just below those and try to get filled. You can see the big volume spike that we had with this downturn, but this is a way to hedge your Bitcoin if you think that there's gonna be a big downdraft. Now, it's in the past I've hedged with alt cryptocurrencies, but because those other cryptocurrencies are valued in Bitcoin, Sometimes you get a rally in some of the other ones, the big ones, like if you go to volume here, the most actively traded one, ones, you can see Ethereum is down 2%. Ethereum Classic is up 15%. But there really isn't a, it doesn't mean that just because Bitcoin is going down that the alts are going to go up. So really the only way you can protect yourself if you're expecting a big downdraft in Bitcoin is to flip into the US dollar equivalent and then flip back when you think it's over. So you can see this downdraft started at a price of about 775 Bitcoin per dollar. You can see we're now down at 763. I have about, I think right now I currently have about five Bitcoin worth, uh, five Bitcoins worth in my account that are in this USDT that I, that I got over into USDT waiting for the next downdraft. Now, I'm thinking about buying back in. I'm looking for a significant downdraft, maybe a test of some of these lows. So probably a price of 700 would have me get back into Bitcoin. That's the best way I've found to hedge that. So uh, I want to look at this eBay auction here for Perth Mint Lunar 2012 half ounce. This is one that we picked up for I think we paid $12 a coin for these. Uh, I may be wrong, we may have paid more, but you can see the price they're going for here. This is significantly lower than what they're going for at AppMex. I think AppMex is asking $34 a coin for these half ounce dragons. But you can see here that they're, they've sold seven of these rolls. They're being sold by the roll, which uh, usually has a discount to it as opposed to being sold by the coin. But uh, the rolls are going for uh, $427. That comes to about $21.50 a coin, roughly. So that's a decent price appreciation for that particular coin. I expect the rest of the half ounce to do just about as well. And the fact that they've sold seven of these rolls I guess that's decent demand. Again, 
there really isn't a lot of liquidity, a lot of demand in these. But that is some encouragement for people who have stacked the half ounce coins to show that even during a period of a decent downdraft in the price of silver, that these coins seem to keep, if not keep their value, even exceed and uh, make a profit. So the main story I wanted to look at tonight is Greece. This is one that we haven't really visited in a while. And I like to visit these because what happens is these stories that are front page news for a long time, they kind of go into the memory hole and they're not reported. So I like to revisit them and see where they're at. Now, if you remember the last major activity we had in Greece was the election of this Cyprus Communist Party guy. And if you remember the um, guy that uh, was his um, finance minister who was talking about defaulting, leaving the euro, doing all these things, he left and quit. And this uh, Alexis Cyprus is kind of like now uh, just uh, an EU puppet. But the big issue is how has Greece fared so far how 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 much uh, hope is there for the future? Is there going to be another crisis? Now, this is an article I came across about brain drain going on in Greece. And this is interesting because uh, this is the sort of thing that you see. We saw this in Venezuela. Uh, of course, Cuba was a good example of it with all of the people leaving Cuba and migrating to Florida. And in Venezuela, many, many of the successful business owners left that country, and that country is just swirling down the drain still. Uh, but this is brain drain from Greece, and uh, we'll read this and then look at some of the economic statistics to see how successful this quote-unquote turnaround has been. The loss of Greece's brilliant minds who emigrate abroad for work costs the country 9.1 billion euros per year in lost tax revenue, says a McKinsey and Company survey. The ongoing brain drain that started after the onset of the economic crisis is also depriving the Greek economy of precious human resources that would be essential for its recovery. The McKinsey report says that one in three Greek employers cannot fill important vacant posts because they cannot find people with proper skills. Now that's interesting because the Greek unemployment rate is still hovering around 23%, but they're saying they can't fill the jobs. Uh, here's a virtually socialist nation that I'm assuming, I don't know, has free uh, schooling, but this is the type of pattern that you see in the progressive West uh, when people have free schooling, they tend to get trained in leftist careers, social work, things like that. So it wouldn't be surprising at all to see that there aren't enough scientists in Greece to fill those positions because that's just not something that lazy people like to study. So, but again, they still have a 23% unemployment rate. The research also shows that professionals and scientists who left Greece to work abroad are estimated to contribute a total of 12.9 billion euros to the gross domestic product of the countries they have relocated to. According to Kathimenerini, if I'm pronouncing that right, pronouncing that right, report, Georgios Tsopoulos Senior Partner and Managing Director of McKinsey and Company Greece and Cyprus said it is estimated that Greece has invested some 8 billion euros into the primary, secondary, and tertiary education of the people who do not wish to stay and work in the country. Data from an Endeavor Greece study estimates that the Bank of Greece by the Bank of Greece revealed that from January 2008 to the first half of 2016, between 350,000 and 427,000 people have fled the country in order to work abroad. Most of the people who emigrated are professionals and scientists who are now contributing to the GDP of other countries, mainly of Germany and Britain. It's estimated that the Greek state loses an estimated 7.9 billion euros in income tax and social security contributions as well as about 1.2 billion euros from value-added tax. The Greeks who have emigrated have accounted for over 50 billion euros of GDP of the countries they have moved since 2008. So interesting uh, migration going on there in Greece. That's the type of thing that you see. Now, Greece had an opportunity to elect 
the far right, of course, they're not going to do that because it's virtually impossible to swing the pendulum back once it's going left until the collapse happens. And then you probably lose a generation before you can get back to some type of fiscally conservative government. But let's take a look at the trading economic statistics about Greece. And an interesting one here, the first one I want to look at here is the population trend. Now you can see here on the close-up chart that Greece peaked around the time the financial crisis started at about 11.12 million population. You can see they're down to 10.86. So this confirms what they're saying. Now, as I pointed out before, speaking of the cart analogy where you have a certain number of people riding in the cart and another group of people pulling the cart, obviously if that article is true, the people leaving Greece are the not the ones riding in the cart but the ones pulling the cart. That's just going to make the situation that much worse. So pulling it out on the long term, you can see that this population decline coincided with the beginning of this financial crisis. And you can also see that, according to this chart, this is the first decline in Greek population that we've seen since basically the 1950s. This is the first decline, and it's continuing. Now let's take a look at Greek government bonds. We know that at the beginning of the crisis that they started to spike and you can see they went from, they're roughly at about a 6% interest rate right now, 6.7%. And that's roughly where they were before the crisis started. You can see they spiked all the way up to 40%, which was approaching bankruptcy. And then of course we had a series of bailouts, basically the rest of Europe bailing out Greece and uh, then the rate on those bonds came down. So we're now almost pushing into a new low. Uh, I don't think 6.7% 6 6 is a very good uh, risk-reward ratio for betting on the success of Greece going forward. Let's look at the personal income tax rate because they've said that uh, one thing that was in the uh, policy coming out of Brussels was that they needed austerity and they needed to raise taxes and reduce benefits. Uh, they haven't significantly raised taxes, but they certainly haven't lowered taxes. You can see the income tax rate hovering there at 48%. So that's a very, very high tax rate. It's not surprising. That's probably one of the another important factor in Greeks emigrating, uh, paying 48% of your income to the government when you could go to another country in Europe. Again, another perfect example of the European experiment gone bad, where some things are equalized and other things aren't, but you still have uh, emigration between the countries. So obviously, productive people are going to flee the socialist, uh, expensive socialist states and go to where their hard work is rewarded. And then the last one we're gonna look at here is Greek government debt. You can see here, uh, maybe a little bit of a decrease there in government debt, but really not so much. I have serious doubts as to how accurate these numbers are as well, because I think they are still cooking the books on on the debt. If you remember when Greece first entered into the euro, it was their buddies from Goldman Sachs that came in cooked the books and lied about their debt to GDP. And, and this actually, I believe, was the uh, statistic that they were looking at primarily, government debt to GDP. Also remember that if you have a brain drain of the most productive people, then that's also going to impact this because GDP is going to decrease as well as government debt increasing as those tax revenues disappear. So you can see that they really haven't made much improvement and there probably is the next crisis in the works. This is a typical kick the can down the road type of situation. Now we have things going on in Italy and France. So uh, there's no way that Europe is uh, has escaped this crisis. They've just kind of delayed it. They've kicked the can down the road. 
So back to the Bitcoin chart here, we could have a decent correction in Bitcoin. I'm banking on that. I'm looking for probably, let's get over to a Bitfinex chart here. Um, I'm banking on some type of correction back down to that 700 price level. I will personally watch what it does if it gets there and uh, then make a decision based on the technicals. Uh, it's possible. You can see this trend is a, a fairly large trend. So if we get down to between 750 and 700, you can see that there's going to be a fairly serious breakdown of the current trend. Let's see if I can draw the, this in here. Yeah, so a breakdown below 750 is going to indicate a significant downtrend. Uh, you can see that we've been trying to break out through this old high right there and of course the oldest high of 789 but uh, we'll have to wait and see if we get a breakdown through that trend line if we get a bounce off that trend line we'll probably just continue to consolidate and uh, I will probably have to uh, reverse course on that position so nothing really going on in silver except for the fact that we do have these lunars holding their value there's still a lot of good buys on the current half ounce on, on the roosters uh, there's some good deals on jam bullion and uh, Gainesville coins as well so keep your eye on those and we'll talk to you next time